Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie Patterson, interior designer. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to use as an example the shelves behind me in my kitchen to share with you my top tips for making the most of styling your shelves and we're also going to be sharing some case studies from our projects over the past 12 years that we've done of examples of how we've implemented those rules so hopefully we can give you lots of ideas and lots of inspiration. So the first rule when I'm styling any shelves or really any surface is to vary the groupings and the way that the items are displayed. So one of my favourite ways to do that is to create this little vignette of a grouping of three. I always have one tall item, one mid height slightly to the side of the tall item and a little object in front that links those two together. And what that does is it allows you to display smaller objects that by themselves wouldn't be big enough for the space. Um, but as a grouping, these three feel really suitable for this kind of space that you've got on the shelf. And it's a nice way of combining different textures and colours together. Often I'll put those on top of a book, so again they just feel a little bit more unified. If you look at this top shelf, this is something that was very popular in the 1990s from another interior designer, groups of three. It does work well, but you don't want to do it too much because it can become a little bit repetitive. But I felt like that worked quite nicely up here because on the shelf below, I don't have too many items. So don't just have individual items all by themselves, have some grouped together, have some repeated, and have some individual items. Tip number two is leave some space for your items to breathe. Don't just shove everything that you love onto the shelves. Also think about having some empty space like I've done here, because this shelf above is quite busy and the shelf below is busy. I just wanted to have items on one side of the shelf and leave all of this space empty. It just feels a lot more um, serene and calm to look at. Sometimes less is more. Less is more, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Tip number three is pick all the colours that you like from your room into the accessories. So in this kitchen, I've gone for a very earthy, very neutral palette, and that's all reflected in the accessories that I've got in these shelves. But within that colour palette, you can see there's different variations of tones and depth of colour. So this antique urn is one of the darkest items that I've got, and I've balanced this shelf by combining it with a white book. That's really important to make sure that you don't have all the strong colours or all the darker colours on one side and the lighter colours on the other side because it won't feel balanced. So make sure all your colours spread equally and that it reflects the colour that you've got in your room. Tip number four is mix your textures. Even though I wanted a really earthy, rustic feel to these shelves, I've still got some shiny items like these bowls and that vase because if everything was a matte texture, it would feel very flat. So make sure that you're mixing different types of finishes, different textures, and it will make your shelves feel a lot more interesting. Whenever I'm styling shelves, I always automatically put the heavier items at the bottom, not just for safety reasons, but because it feels more appropriate. So for example, in this corner here, I've got this really heavy basket of magazines, and that would not feel appropriate or safe to have it towards the top. Whereas all the lighter objects like this piece of art or the leaning piece of art over there, all tend to gravitate towards the top shelves. So heavier items at the bottom and lighter objects at the top. Regardless of whether you have children or you don't have children, if there's a chance that a child could climb up that piece of furniture and it's not secured to the wall, make sure that you always use safety clips. I'll put a link in the box below of some that I use in my own home and clients projects. Attach your furniture to the wall. So obviously these are built-in shelves, they are attached to the wall. Um, but if you have some freestanding shelves, you can just get a little safety clip and it basically wraps around the shelf and it gets drilled into the wall so any children wouldn't be able to pull those shelves off of the wall and have them land on top of them because unfortunately that happens quite a lot and it's just not necessary. So often when I'm looking at like shelves and people ask me for advice, I can see where they've gone wrong is that they've got too many of one type of object, whether that's too many books or too many photo frames. You have to have a selection of different items. So on your shopping list should be photo frames, books. They don't just have to be coffee table books. For example, in here, I would quite happily use recipe books or old magazines if you don't have the budget to buy new books. Um, get some greenery, um, use pieces of art. This is a piece of DIY art that one of my friends made for me. Um, that looks great leaning against the wall. Have baskets, have boxes. They're great for 
actually storing practical items because shelves are not for practical storage, they're just to look pretty. Oh, and the other thing I would say is don't be afraid to use household items. For example, up like up here, these are just cereal bowls from my drawer, but when you have them on mass or displayed in an artful way, they can look like a beautiful object. So look around your house, look in your drawers and see if there's anything that you can take out there and maybe you could put it in a grouping and make it something beautiful. Context is so important. So in here, I'm in a kitchen, hence the bowls, recipe books, um, things that you would find in a kitchen are great. I would even consider leaning, um, if I had a beautiful collection of plates, leaning those up against the shelf. Um, equally, if I'm doing an overseas project and it's by the beach, I quite often will use faux coral or driftwood. Items that you feel like you might use or find in that room normally look so much better. If you can just have a few touches that reference the type of room or the setting that you're in, it looks a lot more appropriate and it just feels right. My last tip is really vary the sizes of your objects. Small items like this are just gold dust. When you find a small accessory that you love, buy it because they're so easy to style into your house um, and really important for creating groupings. Um, but equally, you also want to have some tall items so that your eye is drawn up and also some low items. Here I've got a beautiful marble tray. This one's from our collection with Coes. And I was adamant I wanted a marble tray in our collection because they're just such a useful item to have. We use them for storing hand towels, products, but they also look equally beautiful just on a shelf um, as an accessory in itself. So vary your sizes and it'll make your shelf a lot more interesting. And on your top shelf, don't always think about going for height, but what I've done if you stand back is on this shelf, I've decided to go for a little bit of height just to disrupt the symmetry so it doesn't feel too sort of contrived um, by having a leaning piece of art with a small um, faux orchid in front that interrupts that and makes it a little bit more casual. Um, but then on the other side, I've gone for some low bowls. So you're getting a mix of different heights across the shelves. You don't want to treat every shelf exactly the same. So this project is a really good example of my rule about context. It's a whiskey room and so on the shelves, We've styled it with items that are relevant to whiskey, very masculine objects, whiskey glasses, whiskey bottles, an ice bucket, um, even a little rugby ball, items that feel appropriate to the style of the room and also the context. This is a, another good example about context. This is a kid's room, so it's less about beautiful accessories and more about useful objects and displaying them as nicely as you can. Um, in here, we did some really small picture shelves which are perfect for storing and displaying all his bedtime reading books. And in themselves, because they're quite nice and colorful and fun, they almost act like artwork. Another thing I've done in this room, which I tend to do quite a lot in kids' bedrooms and playrooms, is use some wicker baskets, because shelves by themselves shouldn't be used for practical storage. It never looks good. But the great thing about a wicker basket, and I'll link some down below, is that you actually can store items in there and these just all still look beautiful when they're hidden in a basket. This one's one of my favorites. This is from our Mayfair project and I absolutely love these shelves. But small shelves are just so easy to style because you don't have to worry about the expanse of a long shelf. You will have to have like multiple groupings on a long shelf and it makes it a little bit more complex. I'm talking about it as if it's like rocket science, it's just styling a shelf, but these are really easy to make look good. So what I loved about this was that the size of the shelves worked really well with coffee table books. You could have some leaning and then combine them with a small little bowl. Um, but the client just really trusted us when it came to sourcing all the objects. So we did some really beautiful fossilized um, ammonite shelves in a glass box, which are just so beautiful when the light catches them. We did a petrified wood slice at the top, which brings out all the colors in the room. Again, feels very earthy. This was a very sort of neutral, contemporary, earthy project. So just overall, it just feels very restful and pleasing to the eye. And I would say shelves next to a TV have to be very restful because if you're anything like me, if they don't feel perfect when you're watching a movie, you'll only be thinking about your shelves, not your movie. We appreciate all your feedback and support so much and all your questions that you leave us. So I didn't want to complete this video without getting back to some of your questions that you've been asking us. Um, so I'm going to read out a few questions that were the most popular ones and answer those now. Since your projects often take years to complete, do you ever worry if any of the design choices you make the previous year 
won't be trending anymore by the time the project is complete. Love your videos. Thank you, Marcus. Um, we select really carefully which trends we embrace. So always I say that our projects, you know, our clients are spending a lot of money on their interiors. They need to look good for 20, 30 years. Basically, they need to never redecorate after we've done it. So in order for that to be the case, I do not jump on every trend that I see coming. I always wait and see, do I think this is classical? Is this something that the client's gonna enjoy living with? Is it gonna wear well? Um, and I'm very, very cautious when it comes to that. So I think all of our projects you know, we are our own harshest critic and after every project we always reflect, could there, is there anything we could have done better? We'll review projects even from like 10, 12 years ago. And I'm still really proud of the work that I did 10, 12 years ago. I feel it still feels really relevant. I still put it on Instagram because that to me is a sign of good design. It shouldn't date. Do all of your bedrooms and adjoining hallways have the same carpet? Do you prefer carpet or parquet wood floors for bedrooms? I'm trying to make my kids' bedrooms in our new home comfortable and this is one area that I'm struggling with. Thanks for all the tours, amazing advice. Pleasure. Um, my favorite thing to do with bedrooms, and it does depend on the location. So in the UK, I do like to have carpet because I feel like the cold weather makes you feel like you just want to get your foot out and put it on something relatively warm and soft. So what I tend to do these days is do a timber border around the perimeter of the room and then I'll do an inset carpet into that and it just makes it feel a little bit more tailored, a little bit more contemporary than just running your carpet straight into your skirting. Um, it almost makes it feel a little bit more like a rug. But the great thing about this is if your pieces of furniture are half on, half off that carpet, you don't need to worry about your bedside tables wobbling or positioning of furniture in general, it's all completely level. You do need to have a good installer because you need to try and predict over time when your um, carpet compresses that it will still be in line with the wood. So generally the carpet will start a little bit higher than the wood and then as time goes on and people walk on it, eventually it will be completely level. So that's a really um, nice thing that I like to do. But if it's an overseas project, and again, it's also very much led by client um, preferences. Some people hate carpet, some people love carpet. But if I was doing a project, um, we're doing projects in Oman right now in Portugal, they, because they have a higher, um, they have higher temperatures, a warmer climate, there we tend to do timber floors in the bedrooms because it just feels more appropriate. So I'd say it depends where your home is um, and your personal preference, but my personal preference is to have carpet inset into either timber or marble. Well, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. Denise B has said, just found you, I'm enjoying your videos. Just one thing I've noticed is that there aren't any interior design videos explaining ceiling lighting style, modern, traditional, when to use a flush mount or how low a ceiling fixture should hang according to the ceiling height. For example, do all ceiling fixtures need to match <clears throat> beginning in a foyer or working your way up to the second floor? I don't think I'm the only one that needs this guidance, Lol. Thank you so much. And video in itself, isn't it? <laughs> that is a whole video in itself. And what I'm going to say to you, Denise, is I will do a video on that um, about how I choose um, pendants, lanterns, chandeliers. There's a whole art to it, and um, I, it's not something I can just answer in like two minutes. But yes, there are rules when it comes to like the height of the chandelier or the lantern above furniture. Um, it all depends on your ceiling heights you've got, but I think I'll do a whole video on that to help you guys out. Oh, this is nice. Person 1212, um, exceptionally well done and superb attention to detail. That's so kind. Honestly, me and Ollie read all of these comments and it really warms our heart. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this video has been helpful for you, giving you some tips and ideas on how to make the most of your shelves. If you are enjoying this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can watch lots more videos. And if you'd like more regular updates, you can also follow us on Instagram, at Sophie Patterson Interiors, where we update daily. And lastly, you can also go on our website because we've just updated it, thank you Ollie, um, with lots of new projects that haven't been seen before where you can get lots more ideas and inspiration. So we'll see you very soon.